We have so much to talk about this week. We've got inappropriate conduct occurring within churches. Again, I can't say the specific crime because YouTube will come after me, but it's inappropriate conduct with children, if you know what I'm talking about. We've got some deadly shootings near churches, in churches, and we have international abductions. This was the busiest week for crime that I've been I've covered since I've started doing this. There was so much violent crime and stuff that we should be concerned about that I left out a lot of stuff that seems trivial in light of some of these big things. So put your seatbelt on. Now, if you want to know more about what's going on, make sure you get my newsletter. My newsletter, I put it out every Sunday. It covers all the church crime from the previous week. Head over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You can also follow me on social media. Don't forget to, I'm on X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Rumble. I just started Rumble for all you people because YouTube is throttling the crap out of me right now. Head on down to the comments. You can find all those links. Now, look, we're going to cover a gun incident at a Baptist church in San Antonio. We're going to talk about a deadly shooting near a Decatur church. We're going to talk about another one that happened in Virginia Beach. We've got some vandalism. We have the death of a three-year-old in San Jose because of a pastor's exorcism. We're going to talk about a church volunteer robbed at gunpoint in San Antonio. Now, there's much more. This is going to be a long one. But just know that every time I talk about an incident, I will give you my expert opinion about how you can handle a similar incident. For those just joining us, I am a 30-year retired cop with 20 years on SWAT. My full-time job is to train law enforcement and counter narcotics, but I'm going to bring that to you guys in how to stay safe and keep your churches safe. Now, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button because I'm at 80 4,000 followers. I need to get to 100 because at 100,000, I actually get a live person to talk to when there's problems. And I'll give you an example. I just had a video that was age restricted, which means nobody gets to see it. And it, it was a debrief on an incident and it's on my channel. You can go look at it, but you've got to be logged in. And that really hurts me. They were wrong in their decision. And by having 100,000 followers and getting that person to talk to, I would be able to call them to try and figure out what to what to do to get this right. So thanks for the help. All right, let's get into the crime that happened last week in churches. All right, let's talk about this gun incident at the Baptist Church in San Antonio. Now, this isn't occurred at the Macaulay Baptist Church in San Antonio, Texas, when a woman inspecting the church with her family on a Friday night encountered an unidentified man pointing a gun at her. So essentially she went there because there was an alarm that was at the church and the pastor sent her there to go check it out. We'll talk about that in a minute. And while she was checking out the church, she encountered a man pointing a gun at her. Now, she was able to flee from the scene with her family and contact law enforcement. Now, San Antonio Police Department arrived, could not locate the person, and they're asking for help and locate them. Now, let's talk about this when you get an alarm at your church. Now, I've told everybody, get an alarm at your church, a fire alarm and a burglar alarm, because it will help us catch people that are doing nefarious things at your church. If you get an alarm at your church, please call the police. Now, some of you work in very busy areas like San Antonio, where the police may not respond to alarms or may have a very extended time to get to that alarm. Now, if, if that's you and you've got to go in and check it out, don't go in with your family, okay? Grab another church member, so there should be two of you. Don't You really don't need more than that, just two of you. You should be armed, okay? Do a perimeter check of the building. Walk around the building and look for signs of forced entry and open doors. You're going to look at the windows. You're going to look for broken glass. You're just going to look for any way that somebody could have got in your church. They will always get in through a window or a door, sometimes a roof hatch, but, but usually there'll be a ladder or something going up to that area. If you don't see anything, then go in and start clearing it. If you do see signs of forced entry, call the police, update them, and tell them you have signs of forced entry, and you think the suspect is still in there. That will get you an immediate response from law enforcement. Now, if you were living, if your church is in somewhere like San Francisco, Oakland, or Chicago, you're probably still going to have to go in because they're still going to be delayed in getting there. Uh, Depolicing work, that's what you guys voted for. That's what you get. So... If you do go in, it should be two of you together. Never split up. Stay together with your guns drawn, announcing yourself. And I know a lot of people are going to be in the comments. Don't announce yourself. They're going to know you're coming. I have gone to literally thousands of these alarms. I have found people hiding 
with guns inside of these buildings sometimes. Announce yourself, church security, come out with your hands up because occasionally you'll have a volunteer come out with their hands up. I cannot tell you how many times I've done this, guns drawn, police come out with your hands up and then seeing some random person come out with their hands up that they set it off by accident. Criminals will often hide. So while you're doing your search, just do an initial announce when you walk in and then start clearing. When you clear, doing a systematic method. I think I might do a video on this. I think that would be a good idea to do a video on how you're going to clear your church and how you're going to do that. Look, as you're clearing the area, start looking for signs that somebody might have been there. If all of a sudden you see uh, things that are missing, you see um, drawers gone through, then somebody's there. You, you want to know and be ready for anything that might happen. Under no circumstances should you ever clear an alarm at your church without your gun being out and being mentally prepared for a confrontation. Now, this is no swipe against the lady that brought her family with her. She doesn't know. She's never cleared a building before with a potential suspect in there. We'll do a, we'll do a video when I get time on how to do that and how to respond to that. Because uh, it, you can go look at my prior video I did where I talked about you have to be your own police officer now because police are responding to less stuff. Uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take care of yourself when you clear it, okay? I've literally cleared thousands of alarms like this one and only a handful each year did I ever encounter anyone inside. Now, when I did, I imposed my will upon that bad person and I ordered them to surrender. Some ran, some gave up. None were ready to shoot it out because I imposed my will upon them instead of the other way around. All right, moving on to a shooting near Decatur in DeKalb County. Now, in the early hours of Sunday morning, last Sunday, a fatal shooting occurred near the Spirit of Glory Worship Center located on South Rainbow Drive in Decatur. And that was according to the DeKalb County Police. The incident, which took place just before 6 a.m., has raised concerns about local churchgoers among local churchgoers regarding their safety in the vicinity of the church now one individual expressed shock and a desire for a secure environment especially when going to and from vehicles now in response to the incident the church administration has announced plans to enhance security measures in the area as of the latest updates authorities have not released information regarding potential suspects involved in the shooting the investigation is ongoing but look there's not much you can do about this uh, we are going to have some incidents coming up where people were getting shot at and it's sought uh, or have done crime and have sought sanctuary at a church. We're going to talk about how to handle that. If a shooting happens just before Sunday services and now you have a dead body in front of your church, there's there's not a lot you can do about that except to work around it the best we can and assure our people and pray. That's the most important thing is to pray. All right, moving on to a shooting incident near a church of the Ascension in Virginia Beach. Now, a critical shooting incident occurred on Princess Anne Road near the Church of the Ascension in Virginia Beach, leaving one person in critical condition with serious injuries. Now, the event unfolded just before 7 p.m. on Saturday, and as of the latest updates, police have not identified any suspects related to the incident. Now, Virginia Beach police described the situation as an isolated incident with the victim sustained two gunshot wounds. A second individual was reported to have been assaulted hours before the shooting. Now, the church parking lot in Kempsville was transformed into a crime scene with a blue sedan parked at the Church of the Ascension being the focal point of police investigation. Local residents reported not hearing gunshots, possibly due to strong winds that evening, and expressed shock over the violence occurring so close to their homes. The investigation is ongoing. Now, that's two shootings in a row in church parking lots or just outside of church property. Now, people in trouble, fearing for their lives and seeking a place to hide, will always go to a church if it's nearby. And we're going to see it again. We're a murderer sought sanctuary in a church later on in this newscast. Now, people see rightfully that a church is sanctuary. We should know that and prepare for that. Here's some a little bit of good news. Alaska House passed a bill making church vandalism a felony. So the Alaska House of Representatives has passed a bill with bipartisan support that aims to escalate vandalism against churches and religious properties to a felony offense. Now, Bill 238, introduced by Democrat Representative Andy Josephson of Anchorage, comes in response to a significant uptick in attacks on religious sites, particularly following the events surrounding George Floyd's death in 2020 and the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in 2022, and of course, the invasion of Israel on October 7th. Now, the legislation is grounded in the principle that vandalism against religious properties not only damages physical structures, but deeply affects entire congregations. 
Now, this move has sparked heated debate over the potential for creating a privileged class of victims and the implications for religious freedom and equality under the law. Now, the bill's moving on to the Senate for consideration. It's seen opposition from both Republican and Democrat members raising concerns about its broad application of potential misuse against certain groups, including Christians. My only question now, that's from the press, don't beat the messenger. Okay, that's their words. Personally, like if you if you go anywhere and commit a, a vandalism like that, it should be a felony anyways. Now, if you are in Idaho legislature and you're watching this, why haven't we done this already? I know it's too late for this legislation session, but if you can get that moving on the next one, I'd appreciate it. And we're going to move on to an exorcism that was done at a church and unfortunately resulted in the death of a three-year-old. Now, in San Jose, a tragic case unfolded involving the exorcism death of a three-year-old girl who died from asphyxiation after being subjected to physical abuse during a ritual performed by her relatives at the Iglesia Evangelica Apostles Church in September of 2021. Now, Santa Clara County's chief medical examiner, Dr. Michelle Jordan, testified about the severe injuries Arlie, the victim, sustained, including brain swelling, bruising, and a torn aorta indicative of smothering and mechanical asphyxiation. Claudia Hernandez, R Rene Trigueros Hernandez, and Rene Hernandez Santos, the child's mother and grandfather and uncle, all face charges of felony child abuse resulting in death. All right, we're going to move on to a volunteer that was robbed at gunpoint in San Antonio. Here's our second gun incident in San Antonio. Now, a church volunteer faced a harrowing incident while directing traffic on March 24th at around 8.30 a.m. in the 100 block of South Navidad Street. The volunteer, a 42-year-old man, was robbed at gunpoint. The assailant approached the victim brandishing a handgun and demanding all of his possessions. Now, fearing for his life, the victim complied, handing over his belongings. Now, the suspect then fled the scene on foot, and as of this report remains at large, now, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are actively seeking information leading to the suspect's capture, with Crime, Stops, Crime Stoppers offering a reward of $5,000 for information that results in an arrest. Now, the community is urged to come forward with any knowledge regarding this crime to aid in the suspect's apprehension. Let's break this down. You need to keep in touch with your surroundings so that you can prevent issues just like this. Now, you can see by the way that the suspect dresses that he might be a danger to you. Now, the mask is going to be your first clue. If you see danger coming, leave. Humans are the only animal on the planet that doesn't flee when it senses danger. If you're working security and you see a robbery going down, it's best to call it in. I have seen people getting robbed before and I waited till it was done before I moved in because if you move in in the middle of it 100% you're going to get in a shooting and somebody's going to get hurt and we're not talking about just a suspect but you too now in, now you can challenge them after the robbery but I would advise against that too I would report what you're seeing and follow with cover between you and the suspect let the police know that he's armed that he had already robbed somebody and you're following them put it out if the suspect turns and aggresses you, impose your will, point your gun at him, give him orders, shoot if you have a deadly threat. But look, even after 30 years in, on as a police officer and 20 years on SWAT, and I see this at my church, somebody getting robbed, I'm going to wait till it's done. I'm going to follow the suspect more than likely. Uh, I wouldn't want to, I would not, even as a cop, I would not approach that person until I had enough officers there to deal with a threat. So the biggest thing is just be aware of your surroundings and see that person coming and know you're about to get robbed. I've been in that position before where I've been in a in a very bad city and somebody's coming up on me and I realize they're going to rob me. I make eye contact, I acknowledge, and I start backing out. And then they realize that's probably not the person I want because I don't have the drop on them. Now there's a burglary at a church that led to an arrest in Gainesville, Florida. Travis Brensinger, he's a 46 year old man with a notable criminal history. He was arrested following a break in at the Southwest United Methodist Church. Now the incident occurred on March 27th in the evening when a church member noticed Brensinger in the church's education building and promptly called 911. Despite law enforcement's efforts to coax him out, Brensinger did not respond until a canine unit discovered him in hiding, leading to his arrest. I have no doubt he got bit hard. Now, the damages include a broken mirror, estimated $100, and a flooded bathroom. Now, Brensinger was found in possession of drugs that were prescribed to somebody else, leading to charges of burglary, property damage, drug possession, and resisting an officer without violence. Despite claiming he had permission to stay in the building from an unknown person named Dixie, church officials refuted his claim. 
Brensinger, who has been in the area for only three months, holds active warrants from Pennsylvania and Texas. He's now being held on $65,000 bail. Now, if someone is in your church and you don't think they're supposed to be there, talk to them and get their story. If it doesn't add up, ask them to leave and call the police. I'll give you an example. At my church today, we had Easter services today. And as I, w- I had to walk through the, now I didn't have my identification on. I forgot to bring it in with me. I, we have a very large church. I had to walk through the child's wing to get to the security office downstairs. Now, as I was walking through, I can tell the Sunday school teacher looked at me like, who's this guy walking in like a parent that is not following the plan? I'm like, hey, good morning. How are you? I'm like, happy Easter. He is risen. She goes, he is risen indeed. Great. You know, and she's like, uh, you know, how are you? And I'm like, I'm great. And I could tell she wanted to ask me. What are you doing back here? But she didn't. And I continued on and then went into a restricted area by moving a chain and then walking downstairs. And she did, didn't call it in, didn't say anything, nothing. Look, man, if somebody's not supposed to be there, go ahead and challenge them. And then if they give you grief, like all of our Sunday school teachers have radios to call in problems, you got to call that in. Nobody calls it in. I don't understand that. Now we're going to move on to a murder suspect that ran to a church to seek refuge after stabbing somebody to death. Now, this happened in Greeley, Colorado, and it was a confrontation at the Coin Laundry near Greeley Mall, and it resulted in a fatal stabbing incident on March 24th. Now, Greeley police responded to a disturbance call and discovered a 36-year-old man outside the establishment with multiple stab wounds. Now, despite emergency life-saving efforts, the victim succumbed to his injuries at the hospital. The suspect, identified as 40-year-old Michael Vergara, was apprehended after driving to a church parking lot and alerting police to his location. Found with a pocket knife used in the stabbing, Vergara claimed self-defense, stating he recognized the victim as someone who had previously attempted to rob his car under the direction of what he believed were corrupt Greeley police officers. Vergara cited a deep mistrust of the police as the reason for his actions rather than seeking law enforcement help. He had been charged with first-degree murder and is currently held at the Weld County Jail. Now, each week, a criminal or victim runs to a church for refuge. Your church should be preparing for just such an event. Now use this case as an example. What if your team or a church employee saw this person sitting in the parked vehicle and decided to check on this person in the lot only to discover he's bloody and panicked? You want to check out our training on how to deal with suspicious cars in your parking lot? It's free. Head on over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com. Hit the training tab. Head on over to dealing with suspicious cars and you'll get a certificate after your training. And now you'll know how to deal with suspicious cars like this one. Now, I'm just going to touch on this, but there was a vandalism at a church in Florida where a suspect vandalized a church and was sleeping out front. Now, go to my go to ChristianWarriorTraining.com, look at my newsletter, and I put body camera video from the deputies into the newsletter. Go watch that video. The video shows the person resisting police and fighting with them. I put it in there just so you can see that if you know, you're in one of those areas where you can't rely on the police showing up because there just aren't enough, uh, just what you should be prepared for, right? So remember, always have somebody with you if you ever go talk to anybody, but head on over to the newsletter. I can't show it on YouTube or they're going to uh, shut it down. So now there was a historic black church in Houston that faced repeated vandalism and a caretaker that was 70 years old was assaulted. Now this happened at the Greater Zion Missionary Baptist Church, which is a historic black church located in Houston's third ward. And it suffered repeated attacks and vandalism resulting in significant damage estimated around $50,000. Now, Pastor David Punch reported that the church standing in the community since 1881 has experienced at least nine break-ins by the same individual, identified as 42-year-old Timothy David Anderson. Now, Anderson, who has a lengthy criminal background dating back to 2005, has been accused of breaking stained glass windows and attacking a 70-year-old church caretaker in one of these incidents. Now, despite the church's efforts to offer help, Anderson continued his acts of vandalism, even breaking into the church's food pantry. Now, currently, Anderson's in jail facing two felony charges, criminal mischief and injury to the elderly with a bond set at $20,000. Now, Pastor Punch emphasized the need for more comprehensive homeless services and mental health support in the community to address the underlying issues contributing to such incidents. Now, on to the LDS Church in Henderson that was damaged by an explosive. Now, in Henderson, Nevada, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Meeting House was 
uh, the target of repeated attacks involving fireworks, causing damage and even resulting in injuries. On the evening of March 27th, during a youth activity, an unidentified individual entered the church and ignited a firework-type device on the floor, injuring four people with minor injuries. This incident marked the third time in the past 30 days that the church has suffered damage due to fireworks. Now look, some of these fireworks are actually explosive devices under the law. Now the attack not only damaged the building's front entrance and gymnasium, but also religious painting. Now stake president Steve Morris expressed concern over the severity of the actions, highlighting the involvement of federal agencies like the FBI. City of Henderson Councilman Jim Seabach and the LDS Church have both issued statements acknowledging the incident and the responsive efforts of local and federal law enforcement. In a couple of these incidents, they were having youth activities and somebody opened a door and threw it in there. I'm sure it's going to be a prank amongst youths that aren't LDS. They're targeting the church, but simply paying attention to who's in front of your church can stop events like this. If you have somebody out in front of the church while you have your event going on inside, they can see danger before it comes, and most people won't even screw around because they know they're going to get caught and they're going to get stopped. And so they, they'll avoid confrontation and just not do it in the first place. Now, on to Pennsylvania, where a man faces charges for biting a child during church service. Now, Johnny Harbold, a 29-year-old man from Altoona, Pennsylvania, has been charged with child endangerment, simple assault, and harassment after allegedly biting an eight-year-old girl in the face during a church service at Altoona Alliance Church. Now, the incident, which occurred on February 18th, reportedly happened after Harbold took the girl to another room because she was misbehaving. The child, who sustained teeth marks and visible bruising on her face, described the pain as feeling like something was eating my face off. She also recounted previous occasions where Harbold had put soap in her mouth, causing bleeding. Now, Harbold who is related to the child, admitted to biting her, stating he had just lost control. The nature of the familial relationship has not been detailed. Now for some awesome news. Pastor Clemmy from Memphis, Tennessee, who was shot just last month stopping somebody from stealing a car in front of his church, is going to lead his congregation once more on this Easter Sunday. Again, just one month after a life-threatening incident where he was shot in the head outside of the church. Now, despite not having fully recovered and facing upcoming reconstructive surgery on his jaw and plastic surgery. The pastor views this as a critical opportunity to fulfill his calling. Pastor Clemmy, I'm so glad you're back, sir. Welcome back. That is so awesome. Praise God that you're feeling better. Now, I also have a few international stories. I got a Baptist pastor that was fatally shot in Myanmar's Cachin State. Uh, there's a surge of violence against Christians in India. Uh, repeated raids and arrests at a province, at a church or at a province in China, where they're specifically tar targeting churches there and targeting Christians by Chinese authorities. You got gunmen that are abducting worshipers in Nigeria, and you just have overall rising Christian persecution as Easter comes. It's a lot to unpack. Head on over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com. Look at all the other stories. I didn't go over all of them. I went over just the major ones. Do me a favor, leave a comment, like, subscribe, feed that algorithm. And the most important thing out of all of this, remember your ABCs, always be caring.